sent the cane holder. Planning, Zoning, and Building Committee to order. Let the minute taker please call the roll. Here. 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 Entertain a motion for approval of the minutes from January 26, 23. I'll make the motion. Second. Any questions, corrections? All in favor? Aye. That passes. Next, uh, report and recommendation zoning variation for property at 154 Edgewood. Director Springer. Thank you, Chairman Woods. The um, petitioner for this request is um, PJ154 LLC. Um, but that company is represented this evening by Mr. Marson Phillip. He's there, um, in case there are any questions. The property itself, um, as shown on the overhead screen, is on the west side of Edgewood and um, south of Potter, and it is zoned R4, medium density, single family. This is a picture of the existing conditions right now. Um, it's a newly constructed home on the lot. The permit itself was issued in September of 2021. And on the permit that is handed out to the applicant or they receive it through our system, um, it states that the applicant shall submit a copy of a spot survey once the foundation is formed and before they start planning. Um, the spot survey was not submitted until September of 2022 when the home was near completion. Um, and upon review, when we received it, it does not meet the required five foot setback. They were proposing a 40 foot house on a 50 foot wide lot. So they had to have exactly five feet on either side. And um, you probably can't see it, but right here, it shows that the, the foundation is set back about 4.47 feet rather than five feet. And so they do need a variation. There were no public comments um, received in advance of this CBC meeting, and the CBC held a public hearing on January 16th and voted six to zero to recommend approval. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Director. Uh, Alderman Messina, you have questions? Can we go back a slide? Sure. <clears throat> so I just wanna make that, the side setback requirement is five feet. Yes. He, and he needs 4.47. He is 4.4, oh, well, yeah, right. but he needs five. So it's about six inches. So I know, can I have a follow up? Sure, follow up, go ahead. Can we address the petitioner? I mean, or can we ask like, I'm not a builder, right? I'm not a builder. I have many friends that have built houses. I, I, I know, I think my son would know that you would have to file a permit, right? I and mean, this is common sense. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't understand, I'd love to hear why this wouldn't happen, especially right, but how this didn't get caught at, at the time, right? And this is to me a big deal, because that area, Alderman Jacob and I get a ton of calls about flooding, right, and water considerations. So I just, I guess I don't know if you have that on file, if there's a written rebuttal from the petitioner or? 
So at the public hearing, um, he explained that he was aware that it was a requirement. Um, there was some miscommunication between himself and his partner. His partner was supposed to be responsible for the submittal of the plat of survey, and um, so, but it wasn't submitted. Uh, to Randy's point, um, I, I mean, I guess how did the city not catch it? I, I mean, the city should have caught this. Good question. Um, so I wasn't here at the time, but from my understanding and based on the research, we've gone and looked back at this, this issue. Um, this was one of the first permits that was put into the new EnerGov system. It was actually a converted permit. So it was started on paper and then put into the EnerGov system for processing. And the, the EnerGov system wasn't finished being configured, so we were still adding things. And um, we've since set it up so that there is a requirement for submittal of the spot survey, and um, they can't actually go forward with scheduling a framing inspection until we receive it. But at that time, that wasn't a trigger in the system. And before that, when it was in paper, there was no trigger other than um, you know them knowing the obligation, and um, but they would get caught at one of the inspections usually. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Mayor, please. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at all the other setbacks and basically front. He's farther back. The rear yard's 30 feet, he's got 60 feet. Lot coverage, we have 40%, he's at 37, but I wouldn't tell, he's probably gonna put in a patio, so, or I'm not sure if he's a homeowner or just a builder, somebody will probably put in a patio at some point, so it'll take up that 3%. Uh, but I know we had a garage in, in, incident about, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, same deal. And I, I already spoke to Ms. Springer, going to speak to the attorney when this types like this happen what are this should be a penalty of some kind we don't have that in place right now but I mean there are ways to for, I'm sorry. for sorry I paused too long you know for what is this 4.47 so half a foot we're not going to make somebody take down a house that would be ridiculous well, that's, and, and there's a, so it's the house next door, because there's two houses right next to each other that were just built, same style. Do they have the same problem, or they have a little more than five feet? They have a little, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Director Springer. Um, they have a little bit more than five feet. Um, so if you look at the survey, I, I did anticipate the question, so I zoomed in, and you can see that um, the foundation on the lot to the north is 5.28 feet north of the property line. So there is approximately still a 10 feet between both houses. I, I follow? Yeah, Mayor, please, go ahead. I take it this is the same builder here, right? That did this? Oh, he's the builder. Oh, you're the that, builder. That built both houses. Built both houses, right, I figured. I'm assuming, right. right. That's, that was my <laughs> guess. Yeah, I, I just wanna make sure we take care of this stuff you know, mistakes can happen, but could have easily gone back 10 feet and and shrunk the house two feet and and actually had more square footage if you went 10 foot back, but. So, question, since they built both houses, did the first house, they follow all the rules? We've since looked at the other house, um, or we did at the time this issue be, um, came to our awareness and it, it does meet all the required setbacks, the other house. But did they, call, did they submit the uh, survey? I did not check that. I don't know the answer to that. So, in, so this is frustrating because obviously we don't want to make the guy tear the house down. That's extreme. Uh, but at some point, you have to stop the madness because people just go, eh, I screwed up, so I'll just wait till the house is built and they'll let it because they won't make me tear the house down. Um, when there's remedies, if we caught it up front, uh, we don't get to exercise on any of those remedies now and we just have to live 
with what's there too, whether it was Alderman Messina or Jacob that brought it up. There's got to be a trigger if we don't have a trigger that they can't go to step two, whether that's they don't get the backfill, they don't get the frame, they don't get to do something. The next step before that spot survey is, is submitted. Uh, Manager Mermis. Yeah, I, th <coughs> I think that's one of the beauties of the new software, as Ms. Springer had mentioned. Before it would be relied upon just paper copies and staff doing that, but now since the system is in and fully implemented, it wouldn't allow you to go forward in the process like you're saying until they check those boxes. So what would be, do you know, Director Springer, do you know off the top of your head what that checkbox is, what that safety is? So in the workflow on Entergov, after um, they get, they have to get a pre-pour inspection and then there's um, a foundation inspection. Before they can schedule a framing inspection, there's a required step that it, it just pops up on the screen and you can't go to the next step without completing this one. So it, we've since corrected the situation in the system and the, the software should okay. control that this doesn't happen again. So follow up, sure follow up. <laughs> um, let's say uh, he goes ahead and frames the house, calls for the framing inspection, and then we find that the house is six inches off. Are we going to make them reframe the house? So they would have the option of requesting a variation um, or correcting the situation, depending on how many inches. You can shave off a little, you can pour another wall, you can rip it out. It's much less expensive to, to do it at that stage. Right, no, I, and I agree, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want the remedy to be everybody just decides that we'll just do it and then we'll go for a variance and nobody will make us take it down. Yep. At, at some point, you have to call it. Well, Having been in this business for years, I've, I've dealt with it and I've had to cut foundation and shave stuff. Accidents happen, even with engineers out there setting the foundation, so. Director. I've had this happen in, in my past, not here, but in those instances, the, the municipality will put a stop on the project. You can't obviously continue any further until either you get the variation or you bring it into compliance, and so, um, it usually takes a month or two to get on the docket for the CDC because of the public <coughs> hearing notice requirements. And so um, they take the risk of losing a couple months waiting to hear the answer might be no. So most of the time they'll go ahead and make the correction, at least as I've experienced in the past. Uh, a follow-up. Can we, I was just thinking about other ways to, so when we go out for the, pre-pour inspection for the foundation. Uh, that would be the last inspection before they would go for the spot survey. Our inspector does an inspection. I'm assuming they hand them a, an inspection ticket and says your inspection is passed. Can we have big bold language on that inspection ticket that says that you need to have, you need to get a spot survey and turn it into city because at yeah. that point, Right, they're gonna let it set for two days. They should be calling the surveyor to come out, strip the form, and he can sur survey and do the spot survey. So that might be another tickler besides our system so that I don't feel bad for the next guy coming that says that he's over <coughs> six inches and go, you know, well, we've had fair warning multiple times. So, okay, anybody else have any questions? Alderman Catalano? Yes, the, uh, the plot of Sevilla, did they, did they amend that to reflect the change? They did. So they submitted what we, what we would call an as-built um, plot of survey, or it's basically showing exactly where that foundation landed. So okay, that, that's we have that on record. Right, so that should report it to the county then, right? That isn't something we would send to the county. Yeah. It's more of a municipal <coughs> correction that needs to happen because it's our zoning requirement. Right, because the tax-wise, there's gonna be more in taxes. I mean, I know it's a small amount, but so I'm sure the county will uh, get notified, or how does that work? 
Director Springer. We do send to the county um, through the township monthly all of our building permit information. Okay. It's very general. Um, it'll still include the, um, the square footage and the amount of the permit, which is what they're interested in. The, the correct square footage, correct. Right. Okay, thank you. Alderman Messina, follow. Just a final comment, I guess. Um, I, see, I see trends in other cities where this kind of stuff happens, and so I just speak for myself, but hopefully everybody else. This is, setting, this is going to set the tone for the future. Ignorance, ignorance is not bliss, right? If I get pulled over, I can't play ignorant, right? So to me, this is a stand of like, we don't play the game here. This is not how we work. You can't just build. Personally, I would rather he rip it down. That's fine for me because I'm the one that's going to get the calls and, he, and Alderman Jacob about the flooding that's going to happen. So to me, that to me is, that's ignorance. That, that's not a defense. So I'll leave it with that. I'm a hard no. <laughs> Demo it. I don't care. Alderman Jacob. Yeah, and the other thing I was going to be up uh, bring up, and I know you weren't on staff back then, but at these two particular homes that were built, they also cut down all the trees without coming to the city, and we had residents, Alderman Messina and I dealt with residents that were really upset that all these trees got cut down, and I, I even believe that it might have even went to, they might have got fined for that. Yeah. Um, so staff should have been on top of this, the properties from that point on. I mean, from the beginning, there was an issue there. Uh, Mayor Police. So, I believe parkway trees, they remove them as a problem. On your personal property, you're removing trees. I don't think you have anything against that, if I remember right. So I know a little bit. Um, we do have the requirement for tree preservation, but I'm not sure if it's applicable um, for single family homes. Um, We've enforced it. We have, okay. Yeah. I'll have to dig into that tomorrow and I will find out more. Yeah. I'm not making a legal argument, it's a statement of fact that we have in the past enforced it on our feet. Yeah, no, it is part of the ordinance. Yep. Pretty sure we can do that. For new houses, yeah. To clear cut, start clear cutting lots. <coughs> Absolutely. In your backyard today, you can go in your backyard and cut down a tree. Right. Or you're building a house and you cut down all the trees, different triggers. So. All right. Are there any other questions? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, you have to go up to the... Well, this property changed hands, I think, three or four times within the uh, last five years. And I can, we cannot be blamed for the trees that were cut down, although we were blamed. So we pay significant fines for the uh, trees being uh, replenished in the forests for the trees that we didn't even cut down. They were, uh, we had to get the uh, uh, preserver uh, measure all the stumps that were left by previous owners that cut down the trees and all the trees that we have to cut down to build those two buildings up. They were all in the plan and we have all, we have to uh, pay for every single tree that is not gonna be planted on the backyard, that are gonna be planted, Planted in the uh, in the wood, uh, wood Wooddale Forest Preserves, so we were we pay for all that. If if that's the question, so it's not that we just went out with the axes and stopped chopping trees left and right. That was all in the plan, and that was all approved by the uh, city of Wooddale. Okay. Alderman Messina. So if the property changed hands. I don't know if this is a question for a director Springer. The, the new owners would be liable for the liens. Was that a lien that these individuals would have paid? Well, uh, since then, the uh, 
I think the uh, amount of the trees that need to be planted on each yard changed. So we didn't have to plant, I think, 76 trees. The amounts changed or the owners changed? You said the owners changed. Well, meaning changed, you didn't own the yeah, like I said, we bought it. My partner bought it in the uh, late 2020. By the time I think we had, we had to cut down about, well, don't, I, I need to look into it, but it was just a couple of trees. Not the trees, I'm asking yeah. the properties. This is your partner. So it's just yes. like me and my wife buying a house. Yes. She, she cuts down trees, doesn't mean I don't know about well, it. Well, like mean. I said, all the trees that, were, that had to be cut down, they were all presented to the city and they were all approved. I guess just for correction for here, were you, did you or your partner own the home or did the property change hands? Did you buy the home after those trees were cut down from a previous buyer that had cut them down or is that your partner that cut that down? All right, so, well, there's, majority of the trees were already cut down by previous owners. When we acquired the land, there was additional trees that would have to be cut down and cleared up for the, uh, for the properties. For the house. Yeah. Is that a consideration? I know if I was making a bid on a home, that would be something that would be known to me, and I would say that's a cost I'm going to, and well, you're the builder, right? That's a cost I'm going to incur if I'm going to buy this lot. Would that not be the case? Yeah, I mean, but it well, sounds, so it man, sounds man. like he went yeah. through the process. He did a tree survey study. Yes. They determined how many trees, or he it's said gotten. he's going to take out X out. 15 trees exactly. and that, yes, sir. that translated to then he had to uh, compensate the city for 75 trees or? I know whether that was 75 Some trees, number, but right? Was, that, uh, of which you negotiate in the purchase price. Because I would, just like a lien on a water bill, like if I bought a house with a lien for a water bill on it, I would say, sorry, you better give me a credit of X amount of dollars. I guess that's not up for debate here, but I'm guessing right. that's considered in the purchase price of what he got it for. Right. It's kind of a mute yes. point, I guess. Okay. Okay. No other questions? Uh, somebody want to make a motion to? I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Roll call? Let's do a roll call. Alderman Nates? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Turrielli? Yes. Alderman Jacob? No. Alderman Messina? No. Alderman Sosmarski? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. That passes. Thank you, Director. Uh, next items to be considered at future meetings, Marino relocation, April 13th. Data center route 83 to be determined. Is there anything anybody else would like to bring up? There being none, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. I'd like to call the Public Works Committee meeting to order. Uh, note taker, please note the same people are in attendance. First up, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Um, dated January 26, 2023. So Second. That passes. Uh, oh, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? That passes. Next up is uh, report of recommendations. Pass it off to Director Lang for a presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, for the first item, it is the um, the public service professional services agreement with HR Green for the proposed improvements to Irving Park and Central Avenue. Uh, the city desires to improve that intersection by installing a traffic signal to provide a safe pedestrian crossing to uh, the town center business district of Irving Park Road as well as the metro station uh, to also promote the economic development of that intersection as well. HR Green previously completed a traffic signal warrant study for the city which was uh, which determined that a traffic signal is warranted at this location based on traffic count. Those results have been submitted to IDOT for approval back in December. We hope to have their approval uh, by sometime in March, at which point uh, the design work for this project can begin. And I'm happy to enter, answer any questions on this project. Okay. All the Roman names? 
how long does it take once the design is completed for this to start being built and like the completion expectation date? Director Lane. So by the time we get through, because this is an MFT project, by the time we get through the necessary approvals and submittals, I think we're planning on a 2024 construction window. Okay, thank you. Is that, I guess, to follow up on that, is, it, is IDOT involved in that since it's Irving Park Road? Yes, Irving okay. Park Road is a, an IDOT facility, and as well as because we're using uh, MFT money, there's some additional requirements that we have to go through through the bidding and design process as well. Okay, Alderman Szymarski. Yeah, it shouldn't. Uh, 2024 is a good guess. I mean, I, I pushed this forward last year, the year before, trying to get this done. Uh, I mean, we have, you know, the city manager of Irving, what, they have quite a few drawings and concepts from prior. If I'm not mistaken, HR3 should have drawings and concepts they sent to IDOT to get approval before. City manager Mermis. I don't know if it's so much a concept thing as it was we need to renew our traffic count since before when we did this. Now that data is old, um, so we need to re renew that before we can actually get the schematic design of the intersection. It's not that complex. It's very straightforward. It's a standard intersection, um, so I don't anticipate any issues other than working with IDOT and the timing involved with that. Was the intent, oh, I mean, I know the intent, but I guess for the audience, the in, is the intent to connect to the, still to the back part of the commuter lot, the metric commuter lot? That's, might not have. That's not the intent at all. Not, okay, not long the intent term. at all. Okay. That's the slow traffic Yeah, yeah, no. I know there was a lot of debate about that, so I just didn't know if that changed. No, We're over the detention basin. Sounds like a good <laughs> idea. Oliver and Jacob. Are you bringing that up? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Oliver and Jacob. Um, just, I, I know there's some realignment of the street acro you know, across the street where it basically dead ends. Um, I mean, hopefully we're doing as little as possible there to save money because since that street, where, where there is no plan for that street to go through, um, I don't think we need to get that street entirely curbed and gutters and then everything I saw in the plan. Go ahead, City Manager Murms. Uh, there's actually ongoing litigation with that area, so we can talk about that offline. Okay. Anything else? Okay, would you like to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. All right, could we um, do a roll call, please? Alderman Ames? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Sosmarski? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. And that passes. Next up, an approval of an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Resource Environmental Solutions, LLC, for the Tall Oaks Detention Basin Retrofit Project in an amount not to exceed $389,643.68. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second that. Mayor? So I saw a lot of nice photos here that you guys sent me. I happened to see a lot of nice photos quite a few years ago, and it looks like this. this one going to look like? Do we have a picture of Yeah. Do we, because so it's going to look like this. I don't want to answer the calls from the rest of them. Director, the Director Lang has got a presentation and I actually asked him for visuals so he yeah, will have well, some. They're cute. Yeah, they're and Potter Street right. will be covered in that. Yeah. So. Absolutely. They're nice, nice pictures. But I saw uh, the. We'll actually touch on could, uh, the Potter Street could, Rain Garden as well. Could, could we let him, Peter? Well, oh, I'd, I'd kind of like to make a comment it's very similar to the mayor is, I, I mean, we did, when it, the other pond was finished, it was a beautiful pond and it looked like a beautiful rain garden and 
now it looks like it's full to the top of just junk. So just want to make sure this isn't going to happen with any project going forward. Go ahead, City Manager Mernis. You know, I, I, I hear this a lot, and I usually refrain, but nobody ever mentions any of the successful rain gardens. So we have won awards for our other rain garden in town on Wooddale Road in Elizabeth. It we seems do it the right in Ward 2. That's it, all I got. It seems the only one we remember is the one that went awry. <laughs> Um, so it's not an automatic that it's going to go awry. I just have to say that, but I'll turn it over to you. Because we're letting these variances go. The water's got to go somewhere, and more of my ward, too. It's to go into retention. Go ahead. Oh, all the, this is Marski, and then we'll well, go to your presentation. Everybody sit back and, 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 and realize these are detention basins. <coughs> detention means the key word, detaining water. They're not there for botanical gardens. I, I don't understand. I mean, $400,000 for a concept for something that we already pay. I know you're going to pick potter, but in, in two years' time, we're going to look at Potter Street again and see the same thing there. Well, this, it, this is different. different. This is totally different. Okay. This is, this is a totally different. It's got different shade of lipstick. Okay. I get it. I, I no, this, this is, uh, can you go to the present? This is, this is roping in, fixing Potter Street, and then a completely different area. Yeah, absolutely. So fixing Potter. It's, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Why don't we Let's go ahead and finish? Start money your presentation. Money after money for a retention pond. So some of the some of the issues that uh, the Potter Street Rain Garden faces, Tall Oaks Basin currently faces as well. So we look to address uh, the underlying issues as well as to to make improvements. But we can get into that a little bit more later. Uh, so we're all familiar with the existing conditions out there on Tall Oaks. Uh, the the pond holds water in rain events and is slow to drain out because of a number of issues, including uh, a lack of positive drainage on the metro right away uh, and also some sedimentation within the basin. Uh, these are the proposed improvements to the Tall Oaks Detention Basin. I'm sure you're all aware we've gotten a number of uh, grants uh, awarded to this project. Uh, these grants are for water quality aspects as well as flood management, best management practices. Uh, so you see and a, a key project that those go towards are detention basin retrofits such as this where you naturalize the, the turf grass to a, a native planting. So you see so the, the sorry, project. Can I stop you there? Because some, there's some members from that community here, so just make sure that's clear, right? Right now it's a football, essentially a football field, nicely cut grass. Over the years, because of the sediment buildup, it's now become Lake Wooddale, as they call it. Um, what we're proposing, that's why we asked them to be here, is not, it's not going to look like a football field, quote unquote, anymore. It's going to be this natural preserve, which you're gonna show pictures of. Correct, right? but we'll get the, okay. into some of the, uh, the benefits of that. Yeah, please, Absolutely. thank you. So you see here the, uh, the proposed project has kind of a meandering channel here. If you're familiar with the current project, it just has a, a concrete lined straight channel through the middle, which goes into a storm structure and then out falls onto the metro right of way. What they're proposing is uh, kind of a riprap line channel for stabilization that kind of meanders through, giving a kind of a natural look. And it has uh, a few four bays here, they're called, where the water comes in from our storm sewers, uh, where it'll filter out some of the unwanted uh, debris and then allow the water to flow uh, into our storm sewer structure where it goes underground and then comes out onto the metro right of way. So these areas here, these different shaded areas are different types of uh, native species plants that uh, we'll show examples of in a minute. And uh, we'll also be planting some, some tree species throughout here, as well as they pr uh, proposed a sidewalk connection between Central Avenue and Catalpa, and then a sidewalk extension uh, to get to the uh, Metro parking lot. This is an so that's part item. of that project is the, a sidewalk that's for included, the commuter lot. That was included in the, the proposed plan sheet. It's not covered by the grant because mm -hmm. it's, uh, it has nothing to do with water quality. Yep. It was just an, an additional option that the city wanted to part of that promote walkability and interaction with the pond. Sorry to interrupt. Part of, part of the 389 cost are these sidewalks. Correct. Yeah. Because okay. I, I remember the original, after the grants, it was netting out about 100000 more, I thought. Right. There are some, okay. some aspects. Only eligible portions under the grant are water quality related aspects. So anything kind of additional like this would not be covered under the grants. Okay, oh, multiple questions, sorry. Um, Alderman Jacob, more probably. Well, when you talk about the sidewalks, the sidewalk there, are those the townhomes? Their, their yards backing up to that sidewalk? Correct. Is that what that is? Here would be the townhomes that are uh, a part of the Tall Oaks Homeowners Association. And this is an existing sidewalk along Potter Street right here. Uh, and we would be connecting the existing sidewalk on Central to the existing sidewalk on Catalpa 
or it could follow around and get you into the, the metro lot if the council decided to award that alternate. That's smart. Mayor? I got to So on the sidewalk, if you're coming off of uh, Potter and Central, I believe that Parkway comes all the way pretty much to the end of that. Why wouldn't they just put one sidewalk on the far east end instead of along the houses and the townhomes? So you're saying just go, go north here from the sidewalk? And right. Then so just this, out of curiosity, why, why wouldn't we do that? There's a very steep drop off here from the Metro right away line into the pond and it's actually gonna get more steep uh, because as we lower the elevation of the basin and we can't have anything within the, the metro right of way over a sidewalk, a pedestrian path, without adding a fence line along the, the metro right of way. Uh huh. Question, Fine, another yeah. follow up. So, if I remember right, this is going to be at different levels, but you just said it's, they're going to dig deeper and whatnot. Right now, this thing flows out. So, if you go deeper, do we need a lift station? Is there a lift station also? No, it, it will all flow by gravity. There'll just be some different four bays uh, where water will flow into, and then it'll be sloped down to allow it to, uh, <coughs> to channel out into the storm structure more slowly. So I take it as far as acre feet of water in that pond is not gonna reduce. Are we trying to increase? It will acre actually feet? increase the, the available storage of the basin. And, and another follow up. So the way it sits right now, if I remember right, and the inlet off of Potter is a big metal. So once the pond goes down, there's still water in the pond in the pipes all the way out. So the pipes never really fully empty. Is that still the case or are we taking care of that problem as well? So one of the issues is that the, the elevation of the overflow berm here on the far northeast side of the property where it overflows into the metro right of way when the basin is filled with water is higher than the elevation of the lowest storm structure at Potter and Catalpa. So during heavy rains, if the basin is holding water, this will be flooded over here. Yep. So they're going to correct that by lowering the overflow elevation of uh, this berm here. Oh, so so the, the design goal is to not have any street Floodings so much, on Potter and Catalpa. Much like War Three, well, you live around the block, so you know that. Much like War Three, they literally right. have to put horses out in the middle of the street. Right. You have to right. close it off at uh, Central and Windsor, Potter and Windsor, and on Windsor, up two houses from. Correct. Whatever. I forget the Alden Jacob. Just a quick question with that sidewalk, and I, I'm, I just can't picture it, but I, I want to say the townhomes have a fence behind them, don't they? So they, they are private. So it's not like people are going to be walking by people's yards that are open, correct? Correct. Okay. All the women names? So with the waterways that are in there now, are those through piped waterways, or is that vegetation? It'll be uh, cobblestones, larger 4 to 12-inch cobblestones. Uh, that provides some stabilization, doesn't allow invasive species to grow up, and also filters out debris uh, as the water flows through so it doesn't make it into the waterway. Oh. So they won't be in pipes, they'll be above ground. Okay, because I'm just thinking of what happened now with the basin and how <coughs> debris clogged up the flow of the water. Mm -hmm. How is that going to be maintained so that we won't have that issue again once this is done? So the purpose of the cobblestones is in part to filter out some debris before it makes it into the storm structures where it could clog our storm structures. Uh, right now, we perform a monthly detention basin inspection, and part of that is going to be removing any debris. We'll also have an environmental <laughs> manager on site uh, several times throughout the summer who will remove debris when they're servicing the, uh, the invasive species as well. Follow up on sure. that. So is there an issue with that maintenance because part of this is the metro lot that they're supposed to do something versus us because it seems like before they didn't do this and who does what? So who's actually going to maintain that? The city or Metro? We are going to maintain our basin and also we're, uh, we're in communication with Metro in regards to a beautification agreement, which I'll speak in more detail on later, uh, which would allow us to access certain portions of their right of way for maintenance. Because uh, a key issue for both the Potter Street Rain Garden and this basin is that the ditch where um, our facilities flow out to 
is overrun with sedimentation and invasive species <coughs> and uh, the flow of water is, is vastly restricted, which causes water to sit in the basin, which makes it uh, maintenance, routine maintenance difficult for us. Can you clarify though, there is a sewer, this connects to our sewer system in what's being proposed, correct? Correct, so we'll our right sewer, there. sewer system from Potter Street and uh, the natural right of way will drain into this basin right here there. and then okay. it goes to an existing uh, catch basin here and then an uh, underground pipe to an overflow structure here in the northeast side of the property and then to a flared end section on uh, metro right of way where it discharges. Okay, so it'll still, although it's gravity, it'll still flow and connect to our sewer systems eventually where we'll do the rest of the work. Correct. Okay. Well, it flows to the, the metro right of way where it goes to the east. Yeah. Uh, and actually becomes a part of the Silver Creek watershed. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, go ahead. So uh, some of the, the benefits of a naturalized basin, there's kind of three components of it. Number one is the water quality. You're filtering out unwanted elements and debris before it can make it into the water system. Uh, Silver Creek has been identified as an impaired waterway for iron, uh, low dissolved oxygen levels, phosphorus, and high sedimentation and siltation, siltation levels. Uh, which all negatively impact aquatic life. Um, it's also a flood mitigation component. You see here <clears throat> the, the root systems of native plants, uh, whereas uh, turf grass is about a three to four inch root system. Uh, native plants can get up to, to 15 feet deep, which helps water further permeate into the soil. Uh, it's also um, a natural habitat for pollinators such as hummingbirds and butterflies and bees and uh, other types of mammals and amphibians. You're still going to dig deeper though, correct? Than currently, so we're still digging. We are still, yeah, we're taking out some of the existing sedimentation that's filled in the basin, correct. Oh, do we know what that measurement is today versus what we're... I don't have the quantity of cut. It may be in the, uh, the bid package. I could get that for you and uh, make that available to the council tomorrow. Okay. Anybody? Okay. Okay. Alderman mm -hmm. Sismarski. What is the, uh, the, uh, the grant proposal? The grant amounts? I have that broken down in a, a future slide. We'll get to it in just a minute. That's Go ahead. Okay. Uh, moving on, there was an alternate included for the Potter Street Rain Garden. And we're all well aware of the issues that that has faced. Part of it is, again, the issue discharging into the metro right of way, um, which will be addressed in this project as well. Furthermore, we're going to dredge out the channel because it's been filled in with uh, sedimentation. We're going to be adding some additional trees uh, for some additional aesthetic quality, uh, trimming some of the bushes and shrubs on Metro right of way, uh, adding a few more plugs here that may offer some more color. Uh, I know some of the plug species that are in there now are, are just greenery with no flowering plants, so we're going to be adding some more plugs throughout there to attract more pollinators and give it some more aesthetic appeal as well as planting a row of this uh, Shenandoah switchgrass here to provide some screening and give it some further street side appeal. So that lines from the Potter Street Pond, not, not Tall Oaks' pond, you're talking the other pond, Correct. straight back to like Gina's, like where our lift station is? No. Gina's pond, or just ends there? So, so this is Potter Street right here, East Potter going on to Spruce. Okay. Uh, so this would just be the front of that pond there the front to, okay. to screen right. it from the street view. Wait a minute. There. This isn't the pond that's on Spruce. This is the one that's next to the townhome. No, this is, oh. this is Spruce. No, no, no this, this is, is the townhomes. Oh, okay, that's what I was asking. Okay, so that's why I'm this confused. Is your favorite pond. This is, yeah, this is my favorite pond. The this mud is the pit. Potter Street Rain Garden at, at, near the intersection of Potter and Pine. The, yeah, 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 this little one, right. Yes, with before, yeah, so we're not talking about tall oaks anymore. This is the other. Yeah, yeah, this is. You guys are saying tall oaks. We went to spruce. That's not spruce. Okay, pine, same thing. Spruce, no, pine. No, there's another pond. Oh, I got you. Okay, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Alderman Jacob. Yeah, if I recall, uh, the channel was dredged the last time as well. So when we say we're going to dredge the pond or the channel, that kind of scares me a little bit because that was done before and apparently didn't quite work. Go ahead. There is some additional work that's being done and will be done. Uh, so the pond outfalls right now, goes into a pipe here, and then to a flared end section to discharge onto the metro right of way. That was completely 
backed up with invasive species and mud. Metro came out last fall. They excavated around that outfall, and there's some additional work that we're going to do uh, as part of this project to further stabilize that to prevent invasive species from growing back and uh, once again restricting that uh, that outfall. You said species, right? Species. I, I believe I did. Unless I'm okay. stuttering. Okay. I think. Okay. Species. Okay. <laughs> species. Clerk. <laughs> oh, Roman Carolina. I remember we took a tour uh, years ago, um, and, and I remember one of those townhomes was discharging into that pond, and it was discharging soap. So with, are we going to look into that? I mean, is that still going on? Because if that's the case, it's going to probably kill some of those. Yeah, not, Go ahead, not that I'm aware of. Uh, they do discharge their stormwater, their downspouts, and their sump pumps into this uh, pond, but they should not be discharging any sanitary water. So that is something, was, if anybody is aware it, of, it was to definitely so, let public It looked like laundry uh, discharging. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Alderman Jacob. Uh, speaking of the townhomes discharging in there, I, you know, I, my, I mean, I'm not an engineer, but I would think that maybe we'd want a channel where that happens because that's going to keep discharging and just add wa adding more water to that pond. So we're going to keep it at the same level. Maybe there should be some kind of ditch, you know, at the very end of that where that drains into. We, ahead, we can look, have our engineers look into that. Okay. Did you have a comment, Tom? I was just going to say if we're not going to look into the condos, townhomes, whatever they are that are draining into there, we might as well not do anything. So there, there was whether it was soap from laundry, that's what it looked like. I think that in part's what accelerated the killing of the plants in there. This is an additional add-on. So we're the core concern, I think, for the folks that are here are, is the first pond we're talking about. This was just Correct. because it'd be really cheap to fix the problem at the same time. Is that why you brought this alternative? Correct, yeah. It was added as oh, a alternate. good alternate. It seems since we're going to be doing some environmental work, it would make sense to address this pond as well. Right. Okay. Uh, Alderman says Marski. No. And not have that work either? Can you do the keep going? He'll, she's going to show you the breakdown. I think you're confusing the two projects. They're com completely, completely different. This is an not, alternate. This is the one we spent money on already. Right. With, with HR Green. <clears throat> no. Yes, it is. Yes, no. Mayor, go ahead. That pond was Baxter and Woodman. HR Green was the one on Elizabeth Drive that Mr. Mermis. The Mermes, good one. The Mr. Mermis, so eloquently said that's won an award. He didn't, he didn't mention that we did have a specialist watch it for two years, so I'll be interested to see after the specialist is done. Maybe I've got my directory wrong, so. But it was a company that was, that was the billing I had. It was Baxter. It was Baxter that I, but I had him, we had passed the uh, public works director. He said nothing was going on, which is wrong, because you already have other aldermen sitting here saying they saw a discharge coming out of that building. Killing the, No, he's saying it was redone since it's been, it's been constructed. Was it redone? The no. We're to, the small pond was redone, not the big pond. Not the big right. The small one by the townhomes. Yeah. Yes. So totally different pond yeah. from the big one where our, the residents are here for. No, they don't have big Totally big different problem at the that's pond a, over there. You have an existing rain garden that exists today. Oh, go ahead, Director. Keep going. Go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Going into further uh, the work we've been doing with Metra this past uh, winter, uh, we had them out. We began discussions with them back in fall regarding this project. We were aware of the grant funding at that point, and we didn't want to let that go to waste, but we weren't going to proceed until we got some assurances from them that 
uh, the work that we do, our investment is going to not be adversely impacted because of a lack of maintenance on their property. So they've been open uh, in these conversations. Uh, they went out there in fall, they dredged, they excavated some of the ditch around our outfalls. Uh, I've been communicating with them about uh, adding some further dredging along that right away, as well as uh, working to stabilize the, the ditch line, uh, most likely with, with riprap or some cobblestones uh, to prevent invasive species from growing back. Um, kudos, I, I wanna just, I guess, interrupt. Sorry, but like kudos to you guys because I know they are really difficult to get a, a hold of, let alone cooperate. So I know that's something that even the mayor, kudos to him for also doing that. But that was years of <laughs> residents uh, complaining. So thank you for your persistence. So yeah, yeah. Alderman Messina, you're correct. It's taken a lot of time and a lot of back and forth. Director Lang's done an excellent job with Metra. This project got delayed specifically because we didn't want to have the problem that we've had in the past. We wanted to make sure Metra was on the same page. Yep. So much so where uh, in conjunction with this item going to council, it will not go unless we have the Metra agreement as well. So they should be going at the same time. At the same point, to that point, all right. The, you have that alternate, the little small pond that needs to be fixed, which is in front of us. Is, is that why we're proposing to bundle the two? Because we got Metra's attention finally, right? Okay. That's good. Any questions? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, just the, the shape that our conversations have taken is that the, the best option is likely a beautification agreement with Metra, which uh, they've been uh, responsive so far to our request to, to address um, stormwater infrastructure on their property. Um, but as far as the, the immediate area right outside of our, our stormwater facilities, it's probably best if uh, we're able to, to have access when needed and uh, make any necessary maintenance measures on their, their property with some advance notice, as well as setting some guidelines for uh, the city's, uh, Metro's rather, response time for the city's concerns regarding stormwater on their property. So the, the agreement will include those details, and as uh, City Manager Murray said, we hope to have that along with this, uh, this project when it goes to council. Okay. So here, I apologize, it's, it's extremely small. Uh, are the funding measures, um, for the project overall, uh, this top line is the uh, just the uh, eligible grant funding items with the construction costs, and that includes the, the third item tonight, which is the construction engineering agreement. This item here is the, um, the non-eligible items, which includes the sidewalk and the bid alternate, as it wasn't included in the grant application. There is a chance that we could submit for the, the bid alternate, and it would be approved since our, our funding came in uh, below the awarded marks. Uh, but just to play it on the safe side conservatively, these would not be eligible for funding. Uh, here you see the amount that we would receive from ARPA funding, uh, awesome. which is 50% of the, uh, the uh, best management practice eligible items, including construction engineering. Below that, you see the, the funds from the DuPage County Water Quality Improvement Grant. And finally, below that, you see what would be the city share, uh, right around $150,000 for uh, both. both costs, both yep. projects. Uh, and that includes uh, the non-eligible uh, portions of the project. So if we decided not to proceed with the sidewalk, you would deduct $39,000 and some change from that amount. And uh, <coughs> if you decided not to go with the bid alternate, you would deduct a further uh, 19000 from that amount. Based on what we're getting, I, I guess I'll speak my comments, but Mayor, aside, to get to Metra, the only <laughs> way to get there today is Catalpa, correct? Like to walk down to the commuter lot. Is that correct? Right, Jim. You have to go to that uh, where it's actually a private drive. Um, what's it? Um, Cedar. Cedar. That's Cedar. It is, to get down there. But that's a private drive where they maintain, they blacktop it every year, the townhomes. We maintain that. No, no. Correct. The, the city's responsible for the maintenance yeah, of Cedar do. up until uh, Cary Trail Avenue. Yeah. But, but they also have a public easement for the sidewalk to get to the metro right, station. But, right, but they blacktop it, I believe. I believe they did blacktop it, but uh, under our agreement, the city is responsible for maintenance. We are responsible. We had this conversation with them before. We didn't make the agreement. <laughs> Good old 60 years ago, 50 years, whatever. Yeah, it was like 30 some years ago when they did that. I guess the reason I mentioned, so the reason I mentioned that is I think about, I'm not a real estate agent, but 
walkability to the train for 40,000, I think, is a good add for those that live on Central. Right, everybody. Well, Windsor, everybody would just walk instead of having to walk, whatever, call it a quarter mile down uh, to get to the lodge, to another entrance point to get down to the Metro lot. So for 40,000, considering how much we're getting the project truly, I'm just focused on, on, on Tall Oaks because they've been sitting here for six years uh, waiting for something to be fixed. For 40000 the amount of value I think it will add to the other homes around there, that to have that I think is what makes it negligible. Want, what would you want to add for folks who weren't born to be able to walk to the show? We're letting, you walk, we're letting you come across Irving Park. What else do you guys want? Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. God. It's $40,000 for a sidewalk. Um, go ahead. Uh, that's actually the end of the presentation. So uh, this presentation covered both uh, both items two and three. Uh, item two is for the, the construction. It's for the full amount, and then we would be reimbursed from uh, DuPage County for both the ARPA and the Water Quality Improvement Funds. And then item three is for the construction and engineering services from HR Green. So 150 out of pocket gets both done 100k roughly gets what our friends behind us tall oaks fixed long term ideally okay mayor can you go back to the number where which pond is the the mud pit so the bid alternate is 19,354 that's what's going to be spent at the correct my favorite pond correct alderman uh, jacob oh sorry mayor go ahead uh so we have 154,000, and again, Mr. Mermis said, so Metris, we don't have the signed agreement yet. A uh, right, couple questions. We don't have a signed agreement yet, yes or no. And then the Tall Oaks Pond is gonna look just like the one on Elizabeth Drive, but Elizabeth Drive also had two or three years we had experts maintaining that so who's going to maintain this pond so it doesn't look like the other one so go ahead city manager oh, yeah, i've got three points up first point we're not agreeing to this or recommending this until we have approvals for the metro contract i believe the plans are to have the metro agreement coinciding on the same agenda as this correct that's correct. And that should be next week. If it's not and Metro's delayed, then we'll delay this. Um, the second one, uh, we would plan, I would assume, as a budgetary item to have experts on this moving forward in perpetuity so it maintains its beautiful nature or whatnot. Correct. Go ahead. I Director. can actually add to that. So uh, included in this agreement is actually a three-year maintenance and monitoring period Thank you. where yep. environmental Thanks. manager will be on site to, to check the progress and make recommendations. And beyond that, we've continued uh, the practice of each year having an environmental management firm come out and treat the invasive species at all of our natural planting areas. Mayor? No, that's what I was going to say. So that's in the budget that we have somebody because if I'm expecting staff no. to do this stuff. No, we, um, we have a degreed environmental manager um, give us a proposal every year to maintain all of our right. native plantings. And outside not current staff that can handle this stuff. Correct. Three years at the, let's just call it Lake Wooddale, Tall Oaks Basin, that's a three year agreement currently included in this. Correct. What about the other pond on Potter? Is there anything, any war, I guess call it warranty or anything in that one? We would continue with the same practice of having an environmental manager. Um, I'll have to verify if the three year covers Potter Street as well. I'm not okay. sure if that cost is included. But if not, we'll include it in our yearly the program, yeah, monitoring and maintenance program. Okay. Um, go ahead, City Manager. I would also state that HR Green does have a proven track record with these type of plantings and these projects have worked. In addition to um, the Elizabeth area, I believe they've used native species on a number of other projects for us. Veterans and they've, Memorial. yeah, Veterans Memorial right. uh, outside the treatment plant and a couple others, and they've all been successful. Um, so we believe this would also be successful. Alderman Jacob. So I, I, I'm all for 100% taking care of the Tall Oaks Pond, but spending $19,000, when I know we spent a lot more on the Mud Pit Pond, what, uh, which is a good name for it, and 
we actually had cobblestone or stone on the bottom of that too, which you can't see anymore. And there we also had a hired company that was gonna maintain it. And if I'm not mistaken, and maybe the city manager can add to this, didn't that company like quit or not show up or? No, no, city manager. I, I think the pond basically just got out of control for reasons that Director Lang had mentioned with Metra. We were having difficulty with Metra. I believe it to be a poor design to begin with. If memory serves, I actually think the council took the least expensive design at the time um, for that garden. So there were two other options that were probably would have worked better, um, but we did not want to spend more money in that area. So we, we picked the least best one. Um, and it just got out of control and it didn't work because of Metro's right away, basically. Okay, which we now have, hopefully. Mayor? For the 19,000, if that's gonna take care of that problem in perpetuity, money well spent. And if we're gonna now hire somebody to maintain this stuff, and you have the agreement with Metra because I know they're the big problem, I, I'm, I'm good to go. Alderwoman Ames. So with the two different ponds, and to Alderman Jacobs' point about, and, or, and Alderman Calano about the discharge of whatever the soapy water is, is that going to be addressed before any of this stuff takes place if that's still happening? Because we could spend all this money, and if somebody's putting their sanitary soapy water, it's going to ruin everything. I just want to make sure that's going to be addressed. Yeah, I was going to uh, put it on the, we'll talk with Director Springer about that as well as uh, Director Lang. Um, I believe the 19,000 would correct the mud pit. Worst case scenario, it stays the mud pit, and we can have charity mud wrestling. Here we go. Talked about a wrestling event today. It, special events. There we go. Okay. Got it. Um, so I think that is it. Did we, I think we had a motion and a second. We do. We did way back when. We had a motion and a second. He was a motioner. I was a seconder. I, I, um, Mr. Minnie, did you want to address the council? I can acknowledge you if you want to say anything or you, you could. Well, oh, could you go to the... Sorry. Me. Hello, board, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm Vince Vitti, the president of Tall Oaks. I get a lot of complaints about Lake Wooddale. That's what we call it. Uh, it's scary because I called Randy and I called Peter and I says, you know what? Got a lot of kids over there and they run around. You don't know what they're gonna do. And it's gonna be a sad state of affair if somebody gets in that water and don't come out. It's a safety, safety, safety banner. It's been like that forever. I know the city's been trying to do something about it uh, I mean, Alan's told me, Randy's told me, Pete's told me, even the mayor, that uh, they're getting grants to help move it along. But you know what? My personal feeling, this is garbage. I don't want to drive down the end of the block and see weeds sticking up in the air. They got to do something that's going to make it safer. Leave it the way it is, cut the grass. Fix the drainage. That water has to go somewhere. The ducks have a hell of a time over there. But to make it look pretty doesn't make it better. Do something that's going to structurally take that water and throw it away. Now, I have an old man, lives on Heather. He was a, tr a train master for Metro. And, uh, I used to live at Schiller Park. I used to aggravate him about the trains. So when he had moved here, original owner, I didn't know until I started going around and I became president, blah, 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 okay. So I said, you know what, Marv? Do you have any connections with the Metro? He says, why? I said, well, evidently, as Alan was saying and Randy and Pete, their ditch is their property. And quote, unquote, don't come on my property. You come on my property, 
the Metro Police have called to throw you off. So I said, you know what? You got a lot of clout over there. Why don't you call someone? So he did. He called the vice president of Metro. He's been at the a, a train master for 50 years, 60 years. And I think that helped a little bit with the cleaning of that ditch. Because Metro said, when I get around to it, I'll do it. And you can't make them do it. It's private property. So I think that helped a little. But this plan that I saw this evening about the drainage going to that ditch, I don't think that's going to help. Because Metro's going to say, hey, too bad. And to get a commitment from Metro is going to be like an act of God. Because they don't care about Wooddale. They only care about the choo-choo train, period. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I don't think this is going to fly. You do what you're going to do. You got the money, you got the plans, but I don't care for it at all. I think it's going to look like a bunch of weeds. We got that now. The city took all the bushes down so they could get in there and cut it when they could cut it when it's dry. And that looks empty. No, we want to spruce up our area. We want to keep it nice and clean and blah, blah, blah. But with all the, the water, uh, and when it rains more, the street gets flooded. <clears throat> so, I mean, uh, I don't know. I think you got to go back to the drawing board. Like, I know there's, go ahead, I know we've had a lot of, com a lot of um, conversations around this, right? And I think, uh, Director Lang, one thing we didn't talk about today was the 100-year the rains, right? The rains, right? Uh, could you address um, President Mitt? Do you have anything else that you wanted to add? Sorry. I don't, go ahead. Okay, do you, you can say Okay, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Okay, thank you. But uh, I'm sorry, but that's the way it looks to me. Director Lang, could you maybe address some of those, some of the? Absolutely, Chairman, thank you. Uh, yeah, so part of the, the issue, um, we took a two-prong approach, obviously. We want to coordinate with Metro to improve their property and we want to improve our property as well. And what we've seen is that leaving a turf, turf bottom basin uh, hasn't been successful. The water doesn't have anywhere to infiltrate to and uh, you know, it just kind of sits there and becomes a maintenance problem for all of us. It continues to pond. So that's kind of why we went with this approach. Uh, as far as the, the rainfall, as we've all so known. Just, just want to make sure it's clear. If, if we did status quo like there is today, it's just a, a short term band aid. Right, we could. I know we trench our own ponds right where I live. Right. Inevitably, it's just going to build back up. There's no way to get it back to its quote unquote natural state where it was a dry, dry grass. Is that just Correct. not manageable? To we we can add more volume to it, um, <coughs> but the water is still going to pond in the grass because it has nowhere else to go, and then uh, we're going to be stuck with sedimentation here. And in five ten years, we're going to be right back here having the same conversation. But as far as the rainfall data, we all know that rains are becoming more frequent and more intense. They updated the rainfall uh, bulletin data that's used to design ponds like this a number of years ago. So the design um, data that was used when this pond was developed is no longer applicable. It, uh, it would need to have been built differently by today's standards. Okay. So maybe, President, maybe after the meeting, rather than keep every here, here for a vote, we can walk through it a little bit more. We can walk you guys through kind of a little bit more because there is part of the plan in order to get that grant is to move that water through. This is an issue. We can talk through that because there is a plan. You talked about some of the natural gravitational stuff, but that's why I was asking about it connecting to a, a storm sewer and it moving away, right? Correct. Um, Alderman Jacob. Just to address one of uh, President uh, Minnie's questions, the, so the act of what he had, he had called the act of God, we, we're going to have something, before moving forward, we're going to have something in writing from Metra agreeing to let us go there and take care of this part of the problems, correct? correct. Going forward? Yeah. We have correct. To. And this is going to be uh, basically uh, a thing going on forever, or is it going to be a two or three year deal where in three years we're gonna have the same problem. Uh, the agreement should be in perpetuity unless one of the parties decides to, to propose a change. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Alderman uh, Sosmarski. It's like the three point uh, process here going along with the residents. Aren't we knowing there because the elephant in the room even with the funding in Ward 3 and Ward 2, 
My question seemed to go unanswered. Why is a creek never dredged? Tell me the last time Metro dredged that that, that whole basin, that river, their drainage the river. There's sediment in there. There's always going to be sediment. It's going to, like you said, ladies and gentlemen, stood up there and said, all it's going to do is spill back up. They're not going to address their problem. Why do we have to throw five hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars at their problem, which is going to be the same thing? And like you said, it's, it's just weeds. Put a fence around it, fix the problem, and see what happens. Or call DNR, call I, call the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, call the Army Corps of Engineers, find out what they drain it. They don't, they don't, you never see them out there dredging anything. They need to fix their Director drainage Lang. dish like everybody else in town, like we do. Director Lang, absolutely, and that's yeah. that's why we initiated them with this, and we're not moving forward until we have some agreements from them. Uh, the last time I remember them dredging that ditch line, aside from the work that they did last fall, uh, I believe it was 2020. It was a, a couple of years ago. Their their current practice is to to dredge that ditch line every two to four years is what they're saying. But we're, we, we're asking them uh, to set some standards for responding to the city's needs uh, in much shorter order. I think the mayor addressed it too, right? It's, it's Metro, right? So we're, we need that agreement so that we can take some of that ownership to make sure. Okay. And to, uh, the second part of your, your comment there, Alderman, um, we had to do a jurisdictional um, delineation with the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, this is not a waterway of the U.S., so they have no jurisdiction over it. We've involved the uh, Silver Creek Watershed Committee. Uh, we've gone to a number of their meetings. Uh, we're a member of their, their work group. And uh, this was actually the first identified project uh, to improve their waterway within their watershed plan. This was the first that they This was improved? their first identified project okay. that would improve okay. their. This is actually the headwaters to, to Silver Creek. And hence, it's not so the 150s because of the grants that we got awarded. I'm calling it 100,000 because the 50s, what the other stuff, but 150, let's call it to fix both. Okay, not the 400,000. Okay, Mayor, 150 is not just fixing the two ponds because I asked the question. It's also going to take care of the streets. It's going to have I don't know what how much more acre feet, but again, we can pass this tonight. But if Metra never comes through, this isn't going to happen, and we're going to have to go back to the drawing board. Is mm -hmm. that correct? That's correct. We're not going to recommend uh, approval to the council until we have an agreement from Metra. And we only have so much time because I know the county is trying to move that ARPA money, right? Yeah, we have to, in order to uh, take advantage of the water quality improvement grant, we have to have the project completed by November of 2023, and the ARPA funds, I believe, are December of 2024 used by then yes Correct. yeah okay. we have to submit for the invoice by those times okay submit by then okay so we have a motion, motion. motion does it need to be tied to an amount did we did do it uh, and the amount not to exceed do does the motion want to amend uh, i don't know about the amount but it must include the sidewalk otherwise it otherwise did. i'm a no it did. It was 155. Would that be safe? 154. Correct. So the the 389, 643, 68 is the total cost, including the the sidewalk. Um, and then, as I said, we would um, su submit for reimbursements from DuPage County for the grant funding. Okay. Yes. Yes. That includes the alternate as well. Okay. The, for Pottery Ring Garden. Correct. So if we right. want to add the amount, not to exceed three hundred eighty-nine thousand six hundred forty-three dollars. And 68 cents. Correct. Go ahead, Mayor. And what's the four? What is the 49860 there? That includes um, the construction engineering agreement, which is the 51,000 in the third item. Agenda. Oh, okay. So There's we're just separate, separate, separate contract. contract. Got it. Yep. Just want to make sure. Okay. Seconder agrees to that amount just so we have an amount listed. Okay. So we need a roll call, please. Alderman Ames? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Turiello? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Masuno? Yes. Alderman Sosmarski? No. Alderman Woods? Yes. And, the and that passes. Sorry, go ahead. For the third item, if uh, if you wanted to include a dollar amount, uh, we had the, the agreement come in late last week, so the, the figure wasn't in the packet, but the dollar amount for the construction engineering agreement is $51,217. That's the third item. 51217 Okay. 
All right, thank you. Uh, so that brings up the final item, uh, approval of a professional services agreement between the city of Wooddale and HR Green in the amount of 51,217 uh, for construction engineering services for the Tall Oaks Detention Basin Retrofit Project. And that would be my motion. Second. Roll call, please. It's, it's included yeah, in the, the overall project fund. The, the overall, right below where uh, the city share is, is that larger number. That includes uh, the construction cost and the engineering agreement cost. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Roll call, please. Alderman Ames? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curiello? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. <clears throat> Alderman Sesmarski? No. Alderman Woods? Yes. And that passes. Items to be considered at future meetings, RJNI and I agreement <clears throat> in March, Clefstead lift station repair in March. Any other items? Yeah, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All right, meeting adjourned. All like in favor? Oh. I guess, yeah, okay. Has anybody adjourned yes. or opposed at this point? Okay, meeting adjourned. I'd like to call the order of the Finance Administration Committee. Uh, minute taker, please take note that the same council members are present. And I make a motion to approve the minutes of January 26, 2023. Second. Any corrections to the minutes? If they are none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next is report recommendation, TIF funding request amendment at 8855 Lively uh, in the amount for $392,500. That is my motion. Second. Any questions? Uh, Director Wilson, you want to? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, just a quick recap on, on where we were and where we're at. Um, you may recall our KC cleaners, uh, they are here this evening if there's any questions for them. Uh, came in a few months ago asking for some TIF assistance to relocate to the Mount Grove Village. At that time, uh, the council approved a TIF agreement, uh, maximum reimbursement for them of $1.552 million for relocation and rehabilitation costs of the vacant property at 855 Lively. At that time, they were going to move in, then do some expansion. Uh, and unfortunately, due to uh, some unforeseen uh, events, they've now had to kind of flip that and do the expansion first and then move in. Uh, you may recall last Thursday, uh, you approved the variance for that expansion for them. Uh, and at that time, uh, once they kind of started digging into having to flip their project around, uh, come up with a little under $800,000 in unanticipated costs that they were going to now be faced with. Uh, that, and I believe an issue with ComEd, um, that was unanticipated, unknown at the time that they purchased the property. Uh, so in speaking with them, uh, myself uh, and uh, the manager, um, we'd come up with the 392500 which is half of the additional uh, expenses that they were going to incur because of the change in their project scope and the timing of it. Any questions? Go ahead. Would that see. time bound them to get this completed? The the add on. Go ahead. The project completed. Like if we were to be award this cost share, does that time like does that mean the project has to be done by X in order to get that? Go ahead. So the RDA itself had the timelines in it, and they would still be within that timeline. There was also two additional uh, extensions to that timeline, should something go completely sideways, uh, that we administratively could uh, extend their timeline. But based upon the original timeline in the RDA, they would still, they're still gonna be within that timeline, uh, given the change in their project phasing. Okay. Okay, any, any more questions? Alderman Woods, go ahead. Yeah. So the, the bulk of this override was from ComEd, is that what, you're, what we're saying? Dr. Wilson, go ahead. Sure. Uh, there was, um, they're estimating about $370,000 in additional expenses for electric uh, and generators 
due to that uh, comet issue. Um, and then there, the rest of it uh, was some uh, additional moving costs and then uh, work relocation uh, during the time uh, between them being out of Elk Grove and moving into Woodville. So the relocation stuff we didn't know up front? Isn't that a Go ahead. figurable thing? I get the, uh, the, the comment thing. But yeah, it, it's my understanding, and perhaps uh, Mr. Chen could address that more, but I think they're between the two locations. I think that's causing, I think they were going to go point to point, but now it sounds like that might not be the case, um, which has led to a little bit. So I don't know, Mr. Chen, if you want to. Go ahead. If, if we could, uh, yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to make sure uh, the question is about the moving, extra moving costs. Okay. Um, this is, we, we have to incur this cost because the current landlord that owned the property we're at in Elk Grove, they need me to vacate by the end of this month. And the project is not going to get done by that time. So um, in the last few weeks, I have contacted other uh, laundry facilities in the area. Well, not in Chicago, because they would be my competition and you know, they wouldn't be too much help. So I, I have to uh, reach out to a company in, in Milwaukee who has a laundry, um, you know, a, a good sized laundry who can take mm. on the additional load that we're gonna put on their operation. Um, and they agreed to do that. Um, act, uh, right now, my wife and I and my staff, we're, we're discussing about the logistics, about what is actually, how many of our employees are gonna go with us, because we have to transport um, all the linen from here over there on a daily basis. You know, that's, that's okay. I, I, I get it now. Yeah. I, I thought it was just regular. No. So this is interruption of business yes. to make interim yes. Uh, yes. accommodations yes. to keep the business running without Correct. a working establishment or building to work in. Correct. All right. Correct. That it makes sense to me now. It's just like okay. it's just a moving thing. We, we should have known that. But right. thank you for the explanation. Okay. Any other questions? Sure. Okay. Can we have a roll call on that, please? Alderman Ames? Yes. Let's do, do we have an amount? Yeah, uh, $392,500, yeah. 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 Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curiel? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Kaspersky? Yes. Alderman Woods? Uh, yes. Motion carries. Next is uh, items to consider at future meetings. Well, we have uh, fiscal year end and uh, budget for year 2024 coming up on February 21st. And then we have uh, fiscal year for the 2022 audit report and that's coming up in March. Any other items to consider at future meetings? If, go ahead. Wilson. Yeah, just a quick note related to the budget. Um, you'll get an email tomorrow afternoon with the PDF of the budget, and then hard copies will be available beginning Monday morning in the finance department. If you haven't collected your hard copy by Thursday evening, we'll place it on the dais for you at that time. Yeah. Order Messina. We ask uh, that a CSO drop it off. We can just talk. We'll talk on offline. Okay. Any other items to consider? If there are none, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you.